Good ball game. Um, nice response and answer after yesterday. I thought we had a little more energy. Um, Whitaker got us out of the gate. I thought they had game plan well and were on it a little bit, but he got us into the game enough to turn it over to a bullpen that was far more fresh than we have been. When you have three starters that can give you game one start and extend it, game two start, extend it, game three start and extend it a little bit, it's a whole concept of this and it, it showed up a little bit this weekend in our bullpen today was able to respond. Oxford got the punch out. I think the first guy he faced, Joe Charles, got the ground ball. I think King hit that. I can't remember Dorsey's first batter, but he was effective enough to contain things. Clearly, if you if you execute the double play, it's a different eighth inning, a lot different. Um, and then Armstrong executed pitches at the end. The fastball's away to the right-handed hitter and uh, the sliders to Hoy. It was a, a nice sequence, and Micah called a good game today. Today was difficult. The guys were frustrated after yesterday, um, but I felt like they recalibrated and rebooted and came out, and we played clearly far better. Tibbs, great at bats, management of what he was doing, and it's not easy. That pitching staff, there's a lot of stuff coming at you with that staff. Lefties with really good change-ups, they use their change-ups really well. Uh, they have a variety of righties, three senior starting left-handed pitchers, all of them a little bit different, all of them really good. That was tough to navigate that offensively. Those guys did a good job. There weren't a lot of opportunities to run. They did a good job with the run game. So Tibbs having a big day was not easy. Dingus, again, the moment where he delivered the ball that, that he hit out to right field, that he absolutely stepped on that. Um, big moment for him, game-changing moment. Fisher's at bat with the infield in, got the two strikes, infield's in. For him to hit a home run, you know, a lot of positives there and momentum and energy from that. And it was, it was a big part of the win. Um, again, pleased with the response of the bullpen. It was nice to have Dorsey back in there after looking back a week ago at how that unfolded. We needed to find the right mechanism to get him back out there. We tried to get him in there clean, which is not always easy, but to start an inning as opposed to coming in with traffic. And the one fastball he threw for a strikeout, I think it was 95. That was, that was good to see him. When he needed a little extra, he had that extra gear. So I'm really proud of the guys. It, it wasn't, there were moments I thought we could have done more, done better, but to answer, against a really good team. Like they're talented, athletic, they can run, they're strong, they've got older guys, they've got some athletic young dudes in there, and their pitching staff's tough. So I was really pleased with the response by the, our guys and the team today. Today was the seventh game in eight days for you guys, just going three and one this week. Just what does it say about their, their day to day approach and what they're doing? That was a tough stretch, you know, coming back on that bus, and we chose to bus to Columbus. It's not easy to get there, and it's not easy to get out of here. If you want to fly all over the place, sometimes it's hard. So those were some tough bus rides, tough games. Bus back, Monday was difficult. You, you know what you're looking at Tuesday when that bus is parked out there again. That's three hours. You have that ball game. Our guys couldn't have played better. Gassed, played pretty well. Back on the bus, you're home at 2 o'clock in the morning again. Try to practice Wednesday. That was tough. That might have been more than I should have tried to do. Um, and then you get into to this. and. Um, it's a great response. That's a that's a tough that's a tough week. It's a tough week. And I was really pleased with kind of the poise, how yesterday came unraveled on us a little bit and the pieces of the puzzle kind of started to go back where they belonged and it was clearly better today. What went into the decision to start Cal today? And I guess how nice is it when you give guys those chances they take advantage of it like he did? Well, you saw early we would try to get him into the games. And Lodis has played his tail off out there. Lodis has played his tail off. Offensively, he started off slow. Then he picked it back up, and that thing's up to 340, 350, and he's banging it around and still playing good defense. And then, you know, some of the at-bats lately, it just looked like he needed a breather. And you get Fisher in there yesterday, and he has two really good at-bats, like really good at-bats, and it seemed like he's earned a shot to go out there and start a ball game. And I was pleased with everything he did. The double play, I'm not going to nitpick on what happened there. I, I think he bounced a little bit to the six hole, sensing swing and pitch, and might have gotten himself out of position. I don't know where the feed and all that was. But the backhand play he made, 
early to get the lead out at second base was a nice, not an easy play. I've screwed that one up more times than you can fathom. And he did a nice job and and had another good at bat later in the ball game. So it was good, and he earned it. I know you won't put a guy out there if he hasn't earned it and he's not ready. But was there kind of any? We need you to, to, to be ready for this moment for him today. That was my whole speech yesterday was like, be ready. We don't need game face. We don't need uh, – you just need to be ready to perform every time you walk in here. Every time you walk in this building, you need to be ready to execute as we ask you to execute. So I think these guys are ready, and there's other players that deserve to be on that field, that deserve to be playing, and you can only have nine of them out there at one time. So just being prepared, we know they work at it. And just when your number is called, like it's your responsibility as an athlete to go execute and all of the things you've trained, you have to now put it onto the field and execute it in that setting. And he's not the only one that's done it. There's some others that have bounced in and out, but when your number's called, the bullpen is probably the best example. You got to bring your A game and you have to perform. Last weekend was not indicative of the bullpen, kind of what this bullpen can be. How nice was it? I mean, we talk about today, but I think all week that unearned run today was the only run the bullpen gave up all week in four games. And that's great. Like, we have parts down there. Like, you build this um, and you try to match up the best you can to give the entrance to the game in a favorable matchup for us. Now, they can pinch it, and then that happened today. But if you come out of the bullpen and you're prepared, and you enter that game field with your A stuff, you have an upper hand because they haven't seen you yet that day. And um, we execute. It was, it was well done. And it was not easy to go through what happened in those two or three innings. It was two or three innings, 127. It was a couple innings that bit us up there. And they bit hard. And they hurt. And to say shake it off, you try shaking that off when you're pitching. It's not easy. Um, and our guys responded, and Micah took time with them individually and kind of grabbed back their, their moxie and their mindset, and that goes a long way. Then you have to go out there when your number's called and you have to deliver and you have to execute, and they did. We've talked a lot about Tibbs' offensive skill set, but the catch he made in the outfield, just how much work has he put into his reads and routes in, in the outfield? Tons, tons. Playing all summer, you cannot put a value on what those innings in the summer do for you. Like the read off the bat, how the ball moves and slices right and left handed hitters. Um, he works at it. Batting practice, you watch any practice, you've seen them. Those guys are grinding away out there, running balls down. Um, we do a lot of work with the machines to try to emulate sink and hook and you know, balls over your head, and even the, the little line drive that he came and grabbed today, that was a huge double play. Um, the guys work at it, and you have to keep working every time you get a chance to come out here and train to try to better your craft, better your skills, better your game, and he's done it. And you're seeing some of these guys just, they're taking off right in front of us, and it's fun to watch, but it's happening because they work at it. How much of a luxury is it to have a pitcher like Whitaker that, that can field his position the way he does? It was great. I mean, two innings, I think, let off with first pitch, base hit, bunt attempts. He gets off the mound really, really well. He's like an infielder. So he's your first line of defense on that stuff, and he bounces and handles it. And I think we turned a 1-6-3 with him out there. He manages the pick stuff. Um, he manages himself and the game. And it's not over when he's done delivering the pitch. Like, he's an infielder and he approaches it that way. And you come watch him do his PFP stuff. It's as good as anybody I've ever seen. Coming up on, I think, essentially you've passed the halfway point of the real season. The sample size is getting larger. Uh, when you overhaul a roster like you do, I mean, obviously an effort to improve so many things, how quickly did you see, I guess, sorry, a big picture question. How quickly did you see the improvements and how many different areas this team could improve from, from last year? Well, I guess when you see lighter, and Arnold, and I knew a lot about Whitaker. I, I had not seen Arnold in the form that we've seen him. Like, I thought it was in there, and we had some heart-to-hearts in my office that were like, we're going to figure this out type heart-to-hearts, like, right now. But those guys, as they got more ramped up, I think it took me into our preseason a little bit 
and I started to feel that we're playing the game out there. There were spurts of 15, 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. Where it was as good as I've ever seen the college game played. It was as good as I've ever seen it played. And you have two teams playing. You have two teams. That's when it hit me that this has a chance to be really special. Um, there were days in the preseason where I was as mad as I've ever been as a coach because probably yesterday I saw that, flashes of that, in the preseason. And we had some heart-to-hearts in the dugout like on those post-practice meetings of, of I've seen it, that and that. And that's the hardest thing for me to try to figure out as a coach is how to keep that mindset so you can eliminate some of those days where you're scratching your head that may have followed days that you feel like you have a really, really, really special group, and we do. But there's 26 new people, so I'm still learning like, what some of these guys are going to be like. And you have Lauk and Rowan, and there's some dynamic stuff on the mound, especially that I still haven't figured out necessarily where it's going to land. It keeps getting a little bit better. Um, so to answer your question, it was the it was the preseason and into the preseason enough where the pitchers had extended their outings. Back to, back to Cal real quick. I just, you know, a day like this is gorgeous. Hauser's rocking. Really easy place to sell players to come play for you. But uh, for him to leave Wisconsin, I'm sure there's some sort of relationship when you were at your previous institution. That how were you able to, to, to bring him all the way down here? Well, you know, the, these things, the recruiting and the relationship and what you're trying to do with players, that's part of the recruiting process. It's, it's institution-based in some respects. It's coaching staff-based. It's facility-based. It's the player development piece. Like, these guys want to be big leaguers. So sometimes there's a connection between a coaching staff and what that player feels like is the right methodology for me to be the best player I can be. And he was committed to us at Notre Dame, and when we ended up here, um, it was logical that he followed because of a lot of reasons. And um, he's a talented player, and you can never have too much depth in the baseball player filing cabinet and in the middle of the field. And he's got that. And he could go play third. He could play short. Clearly, he could, he could go play second base. So it was just an easy transition, and when you have this – day and age of coaching changes like we went through, like he and Lauk were two that wanted to make that move. I can't take it that, uh, you know, based on Brett's first question, with how test these last several games have been, take the two days off to kind of recharge your batteries ahead of a Jacksonville team that gave you a test earlier on in the season on the road, just looking ahead to that game and what uh, Coach Hayes' team presents to you guys coming into your talents. They had some really good arms. They did, and the stuff, it was our first road game, and we're over there, and they ran a lot of talented arms at us. Some real good velocity. They're athletic, and Chris plays a complete game. Like, they're gonna run the bases. They'll short game it. Like, they're, they're a tricky group to manage. And the arms stood out as much as anything. They had some octane and some good breaking balls, and um, we had the game in control and they jumped back and tied it up and then our guys off of some good arms kind of rallied and put it away late and Dorsey had a, just a tremendous outing so that's what I thought of that and they're going to run those arms at us again and it's, it's going to be a good environment. Um, beautiful Easter tomorrow and then the, you have to play two midweek games at some point to try to get the schedule going and when you have Easter and I knew I, I did not want to play on Easter I wanted to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday so everybody can enjoy Easter then you know you're going to get Sunday and you're going to get Monday. So then let's let's give these two a shot this week and then you're going to Boston College. So the back end of this will be tough, but I think the guys are probably a little refreshed when they get these two days. Do you have an idea for your starters for those two no, days yet? No, I don't. And I, I haven't that barely digested this. Um, we'll let you know, but I, I can't I can't answer that right now. Okay. You said, you said before the Clemson series, uh, Ben Barrett started throwing again, ramped him back up. I guess is there optimism he can get back this week or that maybe a little bit? No, I think he's got to now get a couple bullpens under okay. his belt. But it's it's coming. Sure. It's it's not like Tuesday, Wednesday. Though. Okay. Good. Thanks, Have a great Easter. Thank you.